Welcome guys. Today we are going to study about amino acid titration curves. The prerequisite for this one is my earlier video in which I explained acid base concept in biology. If you go through it, it would be easier to understand the amino acid titration curve. The link for the video is in the description box. So let's begin. So this is the structure of amino acid which has a carboxyl group and an amino group and when we keep on adding hydroxyl ions this goes into three stages from plus one to zero to minus one these charges are due to the plus one is due to the amine group which is this one and when we add hydroxyl ion in this the H plus ion leaves carboxyl group and this become negatively charged so one negative and a positive both cancel each other and the charge is zero this is the charge at which we also say pi isoelectric point of amino acid now we when we keep on adding hydroxyl ion finally what will happen that this h plus from amine group also lose from this atom and now the charge is negatively charged now why this h plus removal is taking place so if you remember acid base concept you remember acetic acid right so there was a ch3cooh if you see the structure of acetic acid a little similar structure to acetic acid and so is the properties what kind of acid was acetic acid it was a weak acid okay to understand to simplify acid and base whatever whatever molecule which accept H plus we consider this as base the molecule which removes H plus or donate H plus we will call it as acid okay and the one which accept H plus we will consider it as a base to simplify our conversation further so what do we mean by a um, weak acid weak acid is the one if suppose you add HCl to acetic acid, what will happen? This acetic acid will start behaving like a base. Right? There was one more concept, if you can recall, that was conjugate base. Conjugate acid base right so this ch3coh can dissociate into ch3 coo minus and h plus yes so this ch3coh can donate an h plus so this is an acid whereas the acetate CH3COO minus can accept an H plus and become CH3COH so it behaves like a base. So it's the same molecule which can act as both acid and base and that's why we call it as conjugate acid base. If you look at if you look at the amino acid, the amino acid is also like that. So it has COOH which can give its H plus or the reverse of reaction would be this molecule can accept an H plus. 
the difference is there are two groups one is COH and one is amine and so there are two groups which can donate as well as accept hydrogen ion okay so if I ask you at lower pH what would be the charge on amino acid on all the amino acid so this would be plus one why because at low pH this acid will behave like a base so what it will do it will accept hydrogen so this COH will be occupied this NH3 plus would be occupied so the charge would be plus as we keep on adding hydroxyl ion into it what will happen now this COOH carboxyl group start behaving like an acid and it will donate an H plus you understand so at low pH all the amino acid will be positively charged now let's see the other group which is amine group now this amine group is like ammonium ion so this is NH4 plus and this can be dissociated into NH3 and H plus right ammonium is a weak base which means if we have something like NaOH what would be the behavior of ammonium ion it will donate an H plus which means it will become an acid if we if it is present with any OH and hence when we keep on adding hydroxyl ion this ammonium ion of this molecule this molecule which has zero charge we call it as Zwitter ion okay I'm bad at spelling and writings Mm -hmm. So, this Zwitter ion will donate an H plus if we keep on adding hydroxyl ion. Okay. And so, this amine, ammonium ion, will con convert into an H2 by losing an H plus. Right. So, we get the rough idea of it. So, there are two groups. One is behaving like acetic acid and the other group is behaving like the ammonium ion or here it is NH3+. So, there are three ions which can exist. Now, if you can recall the concept, there is, there is something called as K. A dissociation constant which is based or derived from K the equilibrium constant which means at the dissociation constant these two ions plus 1 and 0 are in equilibrium which means in equal quantity and the log of this is pKa. If you recall the concept from acid base concept in biology, this is pKa, which means at this particular pH, at this particular pH, you have equal amount of plus charge and zero charge. Also, this one we can call it as pKa1 because this is between these two ions. Similarly, this one would be pKa2. 
Now, what is this pKa2? At this particular pH, 0 and negative charges will be equal in number. Okay? So, we have plus 1 and 0, 0 and minus 1. So, if I add pKa1 plus pKa2 and divide it by 2, what I should get? Plus 1 plus minus 1 divided by 2 which finally will come as 0. Yes, so this is what is Pi. If you have understood, it's good. If not, don't worry because we are going to do an experiment to understand how this goes. And for that, we are going to take glycine. Now, if you remember the structure of glycine, this is the simplest amino acid. Okay, so there is no R group, there is only a hydrogen. So this simplify everything for us. So now we can see clearly there is an amino group, there is a carboxyl group. At pKa1, they dissociate into uh, NH3 plus and CO minus which means a zero charge and this was a plus charge plus one and this one is minus one okay so at pKa1 this particular molecule and this particular mo molecule is in equal number so if it see the number this is 2.34 so at a pH 2.34 we have plus one charge and zero in equal number okay similarly at pKa2 we have zero and minus one charge in equal number and so the zero charge is our pi now what is this experiment about this is a titration curve of glycine. So at lower pH, what would be the charge on glycine? Plus 1. All the amino acids are positively charged. Why? Because the COOH will have hydrogen atom at lower pH. At lower pH. This will behave like a base, so it will accept a hydrogen and the carboxyl group will be occupied. And when you keep on adding hydroxyl ion equivalents on the x-axis, you can see this curve. So like a typical conjugate acid-base curve, this will go like that. So you keep on adding and then we can see that it this particular area this is buffering right so in this this much amount of NOH is added but the change in pk ph is very less right so this is the buffering capacity from where this buffering capacity is coming from the carboxyl group right so the conversion of carboxyl is a carboxyl group into carboxylate similarly there is another buffering will happen from this amine which is positively charged to the chargeless amine okay and this would be another buffering capacity so you keep on adding NaOH but change in pH would be very less this is the another buffering capacity coming from the amine group so it is a biphasic curve one curve is because of carboxylic acid and the other one is due to amine now it is important to note that the pi look at the pi which is just in between pk1 and pk2 this 
is a very sharp point which means uh, even a, a small amount of NUH can push this one to either this or to this direction and that's why we can separate amino acids or peptides on the basis of PI because this is an exact number so 5.97 if it is 6 then the reaction will move here if this one is 5.9 reaction will move here right so if I ask you that at for instance um, pH say 7 which of these three will be maximum it will be NH3CH2CO minus the Zwitter ion will be maximum right why because if we take 5.97 and 9.6 what is the middle point? The middle point would be say 9.6 plus 5.67 add them and divide by 2 which roughly comes as 7.5 right approximately and at that particular point we have we have more amount of this zitter ion right now as I explain this I want to come back to acetic acid okay so if you see the acetic acid pk is 4.8 whereas glycine first pk is 2.34 methylamine which is a similar structure to the amino group glycine it has a pk of 10.6 whereas the amine of this glycine is 9.6 why there is lowering of pk in comparison to this so the answer is this amine group so this amine group creates a repulsion between the coh and that's why this h can lose easily or earlier than 4.8 it become 2.3 similarly in this glycine there will be a pull of electron from carboxyl group and because of this pull of electron this hydrogen will come out faster and instead of 10.6 it comes on 9.6 I hope you all have liked this video uh, we will continue with next amino acid uh, and we'll see that how our chains can influence PKA and PI of the amino acid. Thank you. See you guys. Bye.